everyone. My name is Kimmy Williams. I'm Jessica Lin. I'm Navita Bawa. My name is Christine Abernathy. And I'm Jessica Tanady. And we are developer advocates here at Facebook Open Source. Today, we're going to be answering some of your frequently asked questions about hackathons. And with that, let's go. How do you figure out what to work on at a hackathon? The theme of the F8 hackathon this year is to build together and grow together. When I think of that, I think of the ways we can leverage futuristic tech like the Wit AI voice recognition technology or Spark AR's augmented reality tools to bring people closer together. So off the bat, I'm thinking of things like voice assistants or visual storytelling experiences, or what about AR filters that react to what you're saying? I generally advise hackers to think about something in their lives that they feel could be improved with code. So I find that hackers who have a very clear understanding of the specific thing they're trying to solve for tend to create more interesting projects than hackers who are trying to tackle something really big and vague, which is to say that your project does not need to change the world for it to be successful. Now keep in mind that Facebook has a set of community guidelines that your project needs to follow for it to be judged for prizes. I've included a link in the description below for a full set of roles, but basically, if it wouldn't be appropriate for a 13-year-old, you might have to rethink your project. How do you pitch your project ideas to other hackers? I'll split this question into two parts. First, where to pitch your idea, and then how to pitch your idea. First, where to pitch. Join the Facebook Hackathon group and create a post with your pitch. The link to the group will be provided to you. Next, how to pitch. In the group, Create a post and make sure to include the following four. One, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Two, what is your proposed solution? Three, what team members, skills, or roles are needed? For example, you may be great at front-end development, but are interested to find teammates with machine learning or design experience. List that out in your post. And lastly, four, list out which developer tools will be used. This will help potential teammates filter down which projects they will be able to and are interested to join. How do you find a team or collaborators? If you are looking for a team to join, review the pitch posts in the Facebook Hackathons Facebook group for projects you would be excited to build. Engage with the person who made the post to learn more about what problems they are trying to solve, their proposed solution, and also which Facebook developer tools they expect the project will need. If you have made a pitch, make sure that your pitch provides enough information for people looking for teams to know what skills and roles you're looking for. You could also review other posts, and if someone has an idea related to yours, perhaps consider joining forces. What's the best way to learn new frameworks or technologies? One of the main challenges of being in the software industry is the constant need to learn new technologies, frameworks, languages, etc. Today I'm going to talk about five ways in which you can actually learn these technologies faster and in a lot more efficient way. Now let's take a look at these. Number one, check out the project's GitHub page. A lot of times the project's GitHub page has a readme and also has a lot of hello world type examples or sample demos that you can actually try to see what the project does and what you can build with it. Number two, participate in hackathons, just like the one you're doing today. Participating in a hackathon is a great way to get your hands dirty with code and to also get real world examples of where you can use that technology. Number three, contribute to open source. Open source is for the community and by the community. By contributing to open source, you will not only get the help and guidance from all the people in the community, but you will also expand your knowledge on that topic by knowing what others in the community are doing with that technology. Number four, work on a side project. Once you know which technology or framework you'd like to learn, Work on a side project that uses it. By working on a side hobby project, you'll not only know the capabilities and limitations of this technology, but you'll also get to know what are the things that you can actually build with this. Number five, attend courses. If time permits, attend courses that are related to this technology, whether they are virtual courses or in person, or even get a book that actually has examples and teaches you the best ways to use that technology. This is going to help build a very strong foundation for you to build on. I hope that these suggestions will encourage you to try out new technologies and frameworks and learn them in a faster way. What's the best way to learn Spark AR? The best way to get started is by going on a Spark AR website. I recommend starting with a few tutorials to familiarize yourself with the workflow and Spark AR offerings and then thinking about the pieces that need to come together for your project. You can then get a more targeted approach by going through specific tutorials or looking at specific parts of the documentation. And once you feel like you have enough to start creating, definitely start creating. 
A common pitfall I see people fall into at hackathons is when they think that they have to learn everything there is to know about the technology to start using it. That's definitely not the case, and if you iteratively learn and build throughout the hackathon, you're going to make a lot more progress with your project. What's the best way to learn with AI? Wit.ai makes it easy for developers to build applications and devices that we can talk or text to. Here are some resources that will help you learn how to use Wit.ai. First, the website. There you will find a quick start guide which walks you through building your first Wit app or bot. You'll also find extensive docs which contain recipes that you can follow along such as categorizing the user intent or extracting locations. There are also HTTP API references for you to learn how to connect your app to the web. Make sure to also check out the video tutorials library. Also, check out the wit.ai medium blog. And last but not least, join the wit.ai hackers Facebook group to stay up to date with the latest opportunities, ask questions, and connect with the community. What's the best way for people to collaborate remotely? Hacking across different time zones can be challenging, but it's doable. These are some of the tools that I would suggest. Most of the time you'll be chatting over Messenger, WhatsApp, or even Slack. Now, when you're ideating or brainstorming, I suggest trying out Mural or Miro. When you have work items, if you want to see how things are progressing, try Trello or GitHub projects. Speaking of GitHub, that's probably where you're going to be storing your source code and collaborating together. And finally, for meetings, time zones are hard, try Doodle. Those are some of the tools that I would recommend. How do you deploy your project? For web apps, I would recommend a service like Heroku, which allows you to deploy applications written in Node, Python, Java, and many other frameworks and languages. For native apps, if it's iOS, try TestFlight. If it's Google, try Firebase. But that's if you're distributing your app with different testers. For the hack, you're probably doing a video submission. And if you have a mobile app that's developed with React Native, you could check out Expo. 